I think I'm actually gonna burst. I have got a Walt Disney World trip coming very, very soon, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Today on Walt Disney World Adults Only, I'm doing my first ever trip announcement. Welcome you Royal Highnesses, I'm Dan and you're watching Walt Disney World Adults Only and I am super excited today to be bringing you my first ever Walt Disney World trip announcement. Since we launched our YouTube channel, I actually haven't been to Walt Disney World and I cannot tell you just how excited I am to finally be going home. I've been waiting for this for such a long time. Our trip in 2020 had to be canceled due to COVID. And this is also gonna be my partner David's first ever visit. So I'm so excited to bring him along and show him the magic as well. Now you are not gonna to wanna to miss a single episode of this vlog series. So make sure you're subscribed with that little notification bell clicked so you know when they come out because they're gonna be dropping in a few weeks time and you're gonna get a vlog every Sunday. Back to today, I'm gonna to tell you where we're staying, three different Walt Disney World resorts, what our dining plans are, what parks we're going to, what tours, what parties, and what adventures we've got in store as well. So stay tuned, I've got lots and lots to reveal, and I've also got a secret for you as well. So I have not been to Walt Disney World since 2019. Can you believe it, it's been that long? We did have a trip booked for 2020, myself and my partner David, and we had done a split stay. Um, the first part booked through Disney at the Yacht Club, and then the second part of that trip was gonna be at the Polynesian Resort using points rented from David's DVC. Now you may or may not be aware, but when you rent DVC points from David's, that transaction is final, it's completely non-refundable. So you pay the full balance at the point of booking, and then that is non-refundable. So we paid $3,300 for our trip, Fortunately for us, the staff at Davis DVC were excellent and they sorted us out with a travel credit and we didn't lose a single penny. And we've been able to use that travel credit towards the trip we're going on in a few weeks time. So a big thank you to Davis DVC. They really were fantastic and they went above and beyond what they were contractually required to do. So that was 2020 and I believe that travel was reintroduced late 2021. But I'll be honest with you and say this is my other half's first visit to Walt Disney World and I want him to have the full experience. I didn't want to be wearing masks, him not being able to see characters, not be able to go to certain restaurants. It would have just ruined the whole first magical experience. And so I was really reluctant to do it until things were back to normal. Also, I was a little bit nervous about that travel credit. One of the clauses of the credit was that it wouldn't be refunded a second time. And so I kind of wanted to make sure that we were able to go before I made the booking. And both David, my partner and I work full time. And there are some small restrictions on when we can take leave. So we had to sit down and look at the periods of time this year that we could go, and they were February, June, and September. Now, David immediately didn't want to go in February. He was like, no, 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 don't want to go in February. It won't be hot enough. And then looking at June, it was American school holidays just starting and the prices rocketed. So we settled on September. And if you've seen my recent video all about Disney Vacation Club, you will know that we have just bought our first DVC contract at the Grand Floridian as well. So this is David's first visit. He's never been to Walt Disney World before, but he's a DVC member and he's gonna be going there a lot. So let's just hope that he loves it as much as I do. Since my last visit in 2019, there have been lots of new things that have opened at Walt Disney World and I'm super excited for. So first of all, there's the Genie and Genie Plus service. I wouldn't say that I'm excited about this. I'm not sure if it's a positive or a negative, but I will be sure to report back my experience to you. Then there's four new attractions as well. There's Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which I'm super excited about. We've got uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Easy for you to say. Then we've got uh, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. And finally, we've got Rise of the Resistance. These are all attractions that will be new to me on this trip. Then we've got some new restaurants as well. I'm gonna to go to two of them. We've got Le Creperie de Paris, Space 220, and Steakhouse 71. And then not to mention the 50th anniversary celebration, Harmonious Enchantment, and Gideon's Bakehouse as well. 
Now, I said to you earlier on that we're going away in a few weeks. Actually, it's less than two weeks until we fly. And this time in two weeks, I am gonna be in Walt Disney World. Cannot wait. Some of you may already know that we have got a gorgeous little Bichon Frise called Bruno. I've had him since he was eight weeks old and we have never been apart for the length of this trip. So this is gonna be the longest time away from Bruno. That's gonna be so tough. He's gonna say my mum and dad, so he's with his nanny and granddad, who he loves, but this is a 17 day, 16 night trip. And so, although I'm excited, I'm gonna really miss Bruno. Something else that is new for us is for the first time, we are gonna stay at the airport the night before our flight. We've never done this before. We live in Greater London on the London-Essex border, and Gatwick is probably less than an hour drive from where we live, but, we're gonna go and stay there the night before. It was 136 pounds to stay at the Sofitel in the airport terminal. And basically our holiday starts a day earlier and it means we don't have to get up as early on the day we travel. So our travel day will not be as exhausting. Do you do this? Do you think this is a good idea? Or are we just crazy and wasting money? Tell me in the comments down below. In terms of the COVID arrangements for the US, we currently do not need to do a pre-flight COVID test. This could change. So if you're gonna be going, make sure you do your own research and check what the arrangements are at the time that you're flying. But for us, we do not need to do a test. We're both fully vaccinated. And all we've had to do is download our QR codes from the NHS app and put them in our Apple wallet. I've also printed them as well and put them in my binder. And then we've had to complete an attestation form, which is from the United States government, which basically confirms we are both vaccinated. Or if you had any kind of exemption, then you put that on that form as well. And then of course, there is the usual Esther arrangement as well. If you haven't got an Esther, you may need a visa, but again, do your research and check what you need. We both got our Esters approved really, really easily. So let's go back to the airport. And as I said, we're flying from London Gatwick and we're gonna be flying with British Airways in Club World, which is their version of business class. And I have to just tell you here and now that we have probably paid less than what an economy ticket would have cost. So we're not super rich, splashing out on business class. We've used our Avios points and companion voucher that you get through American Express. When we get to Orlando, we are gonna be using Mia's Connect for the first time. I have to say, I was an absolute lover of Magical Express and I'm really gonna miss it. Basically, it's the exact same thing with the exact same people driving the coaches. It just doesn't have the wraparound anymore and it doesn't look Disney. I guess, really, it's the same. It just costs you $64 now rather than being free as it was as Magical Express. I'm not super impressed with that change, but I'll go with it and it's my first time trying it. So in the vlog series, I'll give you a review. I'll tell you if it's any better, any worse, if it's the same. Okay, so let's talk to you about where we're gonna be staying. And I'm gonna tell you that I've never been the person that's keen to do a split stay. The idea of packing up and moving to me is kind of inconvenient, but guess what? We're doing a split stay. And not at two resorts, we're going to three. We're making it even worse for ourselves. But on a positive, we'll get to experience three Walt Disney World resorts. And for the vlog series, I'll get to show you three different Disney World resorts as well. So there's pros and there's cons, and we're gonna go with it. Now, the reason for doing the split stay, actually there's quite a good rationale behind it. So we wanted to book nice and early with Disney for the first part of the trip to get a special offer that was on with the tickets and also a price on the hotel. So if you book early through the Walt Disney Travel Company, we got the ultimate ticket, which is a 14 day ticket for the parks, the price is seven. It comes with park copper, water parks, mini golf, and we got a really great special offer where we've got Genie Plus included for just six pounds extra a day per person. So less than half the price of what Genie Plus would cost if you bought it when you was at the park. So we booked that first bit deliberately to get the good ticket. For the second part of the trip, we wanted to use the credit note from David's DVC, the $3,300 I told you about earlier on. And so it was a real difficult process to try and get the result we wanted, to find the availability, and for Davies DVC to have the inventory of points to be able to rent to us to secure that booking. So we had to go backwards and forwards a few times, but eventually we found a property we wanted and they had a person, an owner, DVC owner, that could rent us those points. So second part of the trip was all sorted. 
and after using that credit note, we were still left with four nights at the end of our trip where we still needed to find a hotel. So for the first five nights of our trip, we are staying at Disney's Yacht Club. We've got a water view room and so I'm super excited. Every time I walk past the Yacht Club or I walk into the lobby, I've always thought to myself, wow, I really wanna stay here. And in less than two weeks time, I will be. So I'm really excited for that. I use a website called touringplans.com and they're really, really helpful because you can actually see the view from each balcony at every Disney resort. And you can also, if you subscribe, you can actually make a request to Disney for particular views. So I've chosen a room. I'm gonna try and pop up a picture probably here actually, the picture should pop up here somewhere of the view that I've requested. I don't know if I'll get that room, but I'll certainly will update you in the vlog series. So fingers crossed, this is the view I want. Let's hope I get it. And then after our first five nights at the Yacht Club, we're gonna to move to Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge and we're staying at Jumbo House and we've got a one bedroom villa. So it's gonna be really spacious. We're gonna have a kitchenette and our own laundry facilities in the room as well. So I'm really excited for that. Of course, we've got a Savannah view. Uh, and again, through touring plans, I've made a request for the room I want. Again, I don't think I'll get it. It's not guaranteed, but I certainly will update you as I said before. But this is the view I'm looking for at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Look how cool that is. Um, but yeah, that's all done through touring plans. I think it was $17 or something for a year's membership. They've got so much good stuff on there, but the room request is a really, really great tool. And people tell me that if you don't get the room you want, you get something very, very similar in terms of view. So check out touringplans.com as well. Anyway, we're at Animal Kingdom Lodge for six nights. And that leaves us with the final four nights where originally I booked us in at Port Orleans French Quarter. I then moved that reservation to Wilderness Lodge. And then as I said to you earlier on, we became DBC members at Grand Floridian. So I then moved our reservation to the Grand Floridian and we're staying in one of those new resort studios at the villas uh, with a theme park view. So that's going to be amazing. The Grand Floridian is my number one dream resort where I've always, always wanted to stay since I was a child when I went past on the monorail and saw it for the first time and was totally, totally well by it. So dream come true moment is going to be the last four nights staying at the grand floridian theme park view this is the view that i've requested uh and i have to say that if we get that view it's going to be perfect to be able to see the magic kingdom and the fireworks from our balcony just keep your fingers crossed for me i'm so excited that we get that view with regards to touring plans i will just say they make no guarantee or promise about getting you the room you've requested however let's see how i get on it's my first time doing it if I get one of these views out of the three, I'll be absolutely delighted. If I get more, it's a bonus. Either way, I'm absolutely delighted to be staying at these three beautiful resorts. Very, very lucky indeed. One thing that I'm not very happy about is the new Magic Band Plus and the fact we're no longer able to order in advance to collect at our resort at the reduced price. So first things first, when we arrive on the first day, we are going to go to Disney Springs get some food and get our Magic Band Plus. Honestly, I just don't understand why Disney do not have a facility for us to order it in advance and just to collect it from reception as I've always done before. And also, lastly for that travel day, I've also got Garden Grocer delivering some essentials to the resort, some water, some beers, etc. But I cannot believe how much the prices have gone up at Garden Grocer. The price they're charging us for that grocery delivery is actually ridiculous. My first day at Walt Disney World always starts at a water park and this year will be no different. I quite like to have a bit of relaxation, a bit of acclimatization after that long travel day. So with Blizzard Beach being closed, we will be going to Typhoon Lagoon on the morning of our first day and we're gonna be spending some time chilling out on that lazy river, getting a bit of a base tan and recovering from the travel. And then in the evening, I'm gonna break my Magic Kingdom tradition for the first time ever. Every single trip, I always go to Magic Kingdom that first evening, but it's Labor Day. And apparently Magic Kingdom is likely to be rammed according to the crowd calendar. The crowd calendar suggests that Epcot will be the quietest park and staying at Yacht Club means it's just gonna be a short walk away. So that kind of makes sense to go to Epcot on top of that, they're also doing extended evening hours for deluxe resort guests, which means we'll be able to stay in the park until 11 p.m. that night. Of course, the mission for that day is gonna be to ride Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. And we're also meeting up with Steph from our WDWAO team and her husband as well. 
They will have just got off the Star Cruiser, so it'd be really nice to see them hang out together and hopefully have some drinks as well. As I mentioned earlier, we do have Genie Plus included in our park ticket. It was about six pound a person a day which made it a really, really good bargain. They're not doing that offer anymore at the moment. It may make a return next year, but for now you can't purchase that. But of course, I'm gonna be getting the maximum use out of that Genie Plus. So I'll be looking into stacking strategies, how you stack the attractions. So I'll be trying that out and I'll be giving you my results as well in the vlog series. Anyway, over the course of the trip, we are gonna be visiting all of the Disney parks multiple times. Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, Typhoon Lagoon, and of course we're going to Disney Springs as well. And then we've got two days booked for Universal and Islands of Adventure. David absolutely loves Harry Potter, and so he is super, super excited about visiting Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley and doing the Harry Potter rides as well. So two days at Universal and Islands of Adventure. Usually I would just do one day with an express pass. Uh, that's normally enough for me, but because he loves it so much, I think we're gonna have two days there on this trip and we bought a two day ticket and boy, oh my God, the Universal tickets are so expensive. Now, David doesn't know this yet, but I've also bought us an Express Pass for the first day at Universal. It was quite pricey, but I think it'll be really worth the money in terms of just getting around and doing all the rides. Then on the second day when we don't have it, we can then just do the things that we've either missed or things we want to do again and wait in the line. And I bought us the photo pass thing as well they do there. Again, that was quite expensive for what it is, but Universal are quite fussy about taking cameras and videoing on rides. So I thought we may come out with kind of nothing to show for our experience there. So I bought that as well, the photo pass. Again, as I said, expensive, but hopefully worth the money. Okay, let's talk about dining next. And as you know, the restaurants at Walt Disney World are such a big part of the trip for me and such a big part of the overall experience. Now, I really struggled on this trip because I wanted to do all new restaurants, but there are some restaurants that I love that I haven't been to since 2015 and 2017, and that really is a long time not to go somewhere. So some of my favorites are making a return. And on top of that as well, there were some restaurants I love so much that I really want to share with David and let him experience. So we're doing a bit of a combination. We've got quite a few new restaurants in there and we've got some that I love that I've been to before. And then we've got some I don't love that David chose, which I'll tell you about in a second. Now, we currently have 22 ADRs, which is a lot, right? But we're there for a long time. And I will say that once we're there, some of these plans will change. We'll probably change some of the reservations. We might even lose some of them completely. So at the moment, we've got 22 reservations. I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown of where we're gonna be eating. In terms of the new restaurants for me, we've got Citrico's, The Hollywood Brown Derby, Ogre's Cantina, Cape May Cafe, Ale & Compass, Teppanido, La Creperie de Paris, Space 220, The Edison, Chef Art Smith's Homecoming, The Plaza, Trails End, and then we're doing the fixed price dinner at Be Our Guest. Now, with regards to Be Our Guest, it's not new to me. I've been there before. I've been there four times, in fact. Uh, two breakfasts, one lunch, and one dinner before it was fixed price. And I have to say, I'm not the greatest fan, but it is the only way to show David inside Beast Castle. So we're gonna go and do that. And also the fixed price dinner is something that's new to me, so that counts, right? In terms of the restaurants that I'm returning to, these include Boma, California Grill, Yak and Yeti, Sonar, 50s Primetime, Tusker House, The Boat House, Ahana, and Beaches and Cream. When we were doing the planning, I asked David which restaurants would he really like to go to, and we agreed we're gonna do just one character meal on this trip. So, of course, I spent absolutely ages telling him all about Topolino Terrace, how amazing it is, how cute the little outfits are, how good the food is, and then he chose Tusker House. Yeah, I'm not a fan. And with regards to Tusker House, I've been there two or three times before and always had really poor service. So of course I asked him, why Tusker House, David? Why is this so high on your list? The cute safari outfits. Yeah. His other choices though were better. 
California Grill, which is my number one restaurant in the whole of Walt Disney World. And then oddly, he chose 50's Primetime Cafe. I've got no idea why, but I don't mind going back there. It was a good experience. For this trip, we've also got a few tours, special events and parties planned as well. First up, we've got the Keys to the Kingdom tour, which is a five hour walking tour at Magic Kingdom, where you get to see backstage and learn the history and how it was all built. And also I think you go behind the scenes of an attraction as well. We can't film on that tour, but I'll be sure to tell you all about it once we've done it and if it was worth the money. Next up, we've got Caring for the Giants, which is booked at Disney's Animal Kingdom. This is the tour where you get up close with the elephants and David is convinced he's gonna to get to hug an elephant. Just know. And then we have a dessert party at Magic Kingdom for Enchantment. We haven't seen Enchantment before. So the dessert party hopefully will give us a better view as well as some really good drinks and some nibbles as well. Really excited about that. Oh, and lastly, we're going to Moonlight Magic at Typhoon Lagoon. This is a DVC members party. It's put on complimentary kind of after hours it'd be typhoon lagoon in the dark with some of the rides open some special character meets and i understand some complimentary food and drink as well so that's really exciting as new dvc members it's the first time we've done anything like this so of course we'll film and i'll give you an update on what that's like as well really excited about that in fact david keeps telling everyone about moonlight magic he's really really excited Okay, I think that's everything. We just need to start packing now. That's gonna be a proper mission. In fact, would you like a packing video so I can show you what we're gonna take and why? If you would, tell me in the comments down below and I can film a very quick packing video. Oh, and I mentioned a secret. Well, I'm gonna propose to David at Magic Kingdom. So I've booked a capture your moment photo session and I need to find a way to speak to the photographer without David being there, so I can explain exactly how I wanna do this. So when I tell you this trip is special, it's special for lots and lots of reasons. It's obviously David's first trip. It's our first trip as DVC members, and hopefully we're gonna be celebrating our engagement as well. Keep everything crossed, like everything, cross everything. As I mentioned earlier, I'm meeting Steph and her husband on day one, but later in the trip, I'm also meeting Courtney and Todd and Taylor and Jake, all of whom should be familiar faces if you watch our channel. I literally cannot wait to meet them all in person. I'm so excited for that as well. As I've mentioned about a hundred times now, we are gonna be vlogging at Walt Disney World. So if you see us in the parks or at a resort, or in fact anywhere, come and say hi. We'd love to meet you and we'd love to hear about your trip. I currently have a stash of Walt Disney World adults only pins, courtesy of Courtney, en route to me from Indiana. So if you see me in the park, you'd like one, let me know and I'll give you one of our official pins. Let's get organized and let's do this. Walt Disney World, here we come. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you'll follow our vlog series adventures. I cannot wait to share this trip with you all. And if you've got any questions at all about our trip or your own trip, pop them in the comments down below. I will always get back to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, please give me a big thumbs up by clicking the like and also share it with your friends as well. They're gonna love it. If you like our channel and you wanna follow this series, Please ensure you subscribe to that little bell clicked as well so you get notified when our videos come out. And until next time, remember, never grow up.